fade in. The Suicide Squad bombs at the box office, making a abysmal $26.5 million on the opening weekend. Globally, it made $72.2 million. According to the budget, they're going to have to do a lot better than that. So this is, this is pretty bad. They're blaming the pandemic, of course, and that it was a rated R film. Comparing this to its predecessor, Suicide Squad, that opened up with $175 million. And Birds of Prey did better than the Suicide Squad by opening up with $33 million. Black Widow opened with $80 million. And F9, which is the biggest film of this year. The, the, the biggest grossing film, I think, of the year so far is a bunch of literal fucking retards driving cars. Opened with $70 million. Critics and audience agree on this film. Seems like everybody pretty much overwhelmingly likes this film. It could be a possibility that, you know, people stay at home, watch it on HBO Max for free. If you have HBO Max, have you watched it? Did you go to the theaters? I saw it on Friday. I wouldn't definitely uh, see this in theaters. It was awesome. Got a comic book. It was cool. It was real cool. So let's see what some of these critics that didn't like the film had to say. Yet another mindless overproduced B-movie that's neither funny, exciting, nor campy enough to be a guilty pleasure. Yes, the DCU movie is a bit more bearable than Marvel's most recent film, Black Widow. But saying that is not much different than saying that some stinky shit is better than other stinky shit. The truth is that the two movies are still shit. Question, so who are the good guys? Answer, there are no good guys. There aren't supposed to be good guys. It's the fucking Suicide Squad. And actually, James Gunn has a talent for making characters that nobody would have cared about suddenly adore. He did this with Groot. He did this with all of the Guardians of the Galaxy members. And he definitely does this with Polka Dot Man. The problem with the original Suicide Squad is that they humanized the villains so much in the beginning that by the middle of the film, you didn't even feel like you were hanging out with bad people. In this film, throughout it, you are reminded that these are crazy individuals, that these are bad characters. These are villains. These are homicidal maniacs. And that's what's so great about this concept is how do you make someone care enough for the villain that they almost forget for a moment that these people are villains. And I think James Gunn did a great job of doing just that. He did such a great job with Peacemaker, Ratcatcher 2, Bloodsport, Polka Dot Man, and King Shark that I actually forgot that Harley Quinn was in the film for a moment until we cut back to her. And I was like, oh yeah, because I was so intrigued and I wanted to know what these people were doing. There was a lot of talk of Bloodsport just being another dead shot, which you have three individuals that pretty much have the same abilities in this film. You have Savant, you have Bloodsport, and you have Peacemaker. And they even make a joke of that in the movie because they know how ridiculous it is. But let me tell you that Bloodsport is nothing like Deadshot. And I think the story of Bloodsport, even though it's so similar to Deadshot, is done far better in this film. He's not out shopping with his daughter and then Batman arrests him and his daughter's crying. Bloodsport's mask looked great. Looked like a mixture of Cinnabite and Valdo from Soul Calibur. He tells his daughter, fuck you. Like, you know, this guy is a degenerate father and that's what makes it worth it 
when you see these individuals turn around and perhaps do the right thing, do the good thing, because they're actually bad. Also in superhero movies, it's incredibly difficult to make you feel like there are some kind of stakes involved. Like, if I'm seeing a Captain America movie, I know Captain America is gonna win. If I'm seeing a Superman movie, like he's not gonna die. So what are the stakes? And in this film, there are stakes. Like when Starro finally arrives at the end, I was like, how are they even gonna get out of this? He's releasing all of these armpit starfish. I was like, they're screwed. There were real stakes. I was actually concerned for our main characters. It was awesome. Now, somebody may not want to see this film because John Cena's in it, and I would totally understand. Totally understand him apologizing to China so that Fast and the Furious 9 could do a great job in their theaters and still be released there, and saying Taiwan isn't a, a country, and well, apologizing that he said Taiwan is a country, which is utter ridiculousness the world health organization won't even say that taiwan is a country would the who consider taiwan's membership hello we would it was i can't hear i couldn't hear your question okay yeah let me let, let me let me repeat the question no, that's so, okay let, let's move to another one then Right, because because I'm I'm actually curious on talking about Taiwan as well on Taiwan's case. So I understand why that would be off-putting to you, but let me tell you, I forgot like the I forgot there were actors like playing these characters because I literally saw the characters. John Cena does a phenomenal job of just keeping his helmet on and staying in character. I even saw some red carpet event where he showed up and he had the suit on. He's dedicated to this character. And for an audience member and a comic book fan, that is important to me. That's why I love that Dread movie. Because that's Judge Dread. He's not walking around with his mask off, yelling at his clone brother. Really, for me, the movie was was I, it's just hard it's hard for me to pick a character that i love the most cuz i really enjoyed i uh, i thought king shark was superb ratcatcher 2 really steals the show f not polka dot man these two are phenomenal in this movie harley quinn is the best that i've ever seen her and if this is the last time that we see Margot Robbie play Harley Quinn, I'm glad it's this film because she did a great job. In Birds of Prey, it was too much baby doll from Batman in the voice. The character was played too ditzy. It was off. This movie is gory. It is a lot of fun. I highly recommend it. And if you feel comfortable enough, I highly recommend that you go see it in the theater. To see Starro on the silver screen is a once in a lifetime thing. So overall, I loved The Suicide Squad. Let me know if you've seen it. How do you feel? Do you agree, disagree with me? A lot of people were saying that it was boring in sections and uh, that's what you want. It's character development. A lot of people in the original Suicide Squad said they enjoyed the bar scene the most. Why? Because those characters were actually engaging with one another. They were talking. You were learning more about them. There's a part where Ratcatcher and Bloodsport have this dialogue. And it's great. And it does such a great job of telling us more of their stories. I mean, it's hard enough to have so many characters in a film and to give them backstory to make the audience care about every single one. James Gunn did that. That was done in this movie. And it's incredibly difficult to do that. As you can see from all the movies that are put out lately. What if 
the Marvel Universe just race changed, sexuality changed, gender bended, fluidy wooded, everything. For some reason, this is just another film that I happen to really enjoy that's going to bomb at the box office, much like Dread, much like Punisher Warzone, which was far superior to that Thomas Jane Punisher, where he's like, I'm the Punisher, so I'm gonna make you think that your wife is cheating on you with your best friend. Punisher. How did you feel about the Suicide Squad? Are you gonna see it, not see it? Let me know down below. Until next time, later.